Okay, so like I was telling you a minute ago, guys, this is kind of my supply um, of cookware and things right here in this bucket. I'll empty this bucket out tonight and use this for a urinal. I've got, you can see I collected three eggs for my Americana chickens today. And I've got a scrub brush in that pot. That's going to be my breakfast in the morning. And then I've just recycled a two-liter bottle to collect water out of the local creek here right beside the yurt. So, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of cookware and things like that to survive. You carry that stuff around in a bucket. It's multi-purpose, and it's good. You know, this is supposed to be a mobile-type shelter. That's what we're trying to keep it at. So I'm going with that theme. Okay, guys, um, real quick, you know, just a little bit of... Like I said, honing tool maintenance on my knives. I um, just want to show you a couple knives here. I've got two knives here that I carry that are not made by Blind Horse. And almost every knife that I carry is made by Blind Horse. But I've got two here that are made by Abram Elias at Diving Sparrow. One of them is a small four and a half inch bushcraft style knife with nice walnut handles on it. And it is a real nice knife to use just around you know for skinning and tasks like that it's a little bit small for what I consider a good knife to use for you know a one tool option because it's not really long enough to be batoned through great big pieces of wood or heavy enough for that matter it's a fairly thin blade compared to the Pathfinder um, but it's a very very good knife and Abram Elias does a really really good job and when I hone my knives you know I can I feel the angle I feel where I'm biting into the metal it just takes practice to do that but it doesn't take me but a few strokes on each side of the knife, you know, to hone that thing back up to almost a razor sharp edge. And that one's just about there. This one may have not been touched up very well the last time I used it. It probably needs a little bit more attention than I want to give it in this short video. But it's pretty good. And he makes a real nice leather sheath, bushcraft style sheath that goes with those knives too. The second knife that I've got by Diving Sparrow is actually more of a Pathfinder type knockoff that he made for me. It's almost the same blade profile as the Pathfinder knife, same blade size, same blade thickness. It's just got walnut handles on it and it's made by him instead of Blind Horse knives. And I like to carry it once in a while too. It's a real good traditional looking knife. I like to carry it. I'm really fond of the sheath that he made for it. And because it's the same profile as the Pathfinder knife, the Pathfinder knife also fits in this sheath really nice as well. So I kind of interchange it once in a while, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. But Abram makes a, a really nice Scandi ground knife. Jamie Burley's got a few of his knives that he's posted on Facebook as of lately. Um, and the guy does exceptional work. He's going to come to the Pathfinder Spring Gathering this year. And I believe he's actually going to forge a couple of knives for people. Um, I saw on Facebook last night he was running some kind of a contest where he was actually going to have someone come up to his shop and forge a knife that they win and help him to make that knife. I think that's a pretty good opportunity for anybody. There we go. It's got a real nice sheath that he made special for me with an arrowhead carved into the leather. It's just a beautiful, beautiful knife. I'm really fond of it. Then, of course, I carry the Pathfinder Scout quite often. Um, very traditional knife, you know, um, 21st century long hunter type stuff. This is a very, very traditional type knife. It's basically a large roach belly trade knife with curly maple handles. Just a really, really nice knife. Big, heavy duty thing. You're not going to destroy this knife, that's for sure. There again, you know, a lot of people will tell you not to sharpen toward the blade of your knife. And the way this thing is made, this Lansky's uh, diamond rod, you're going to run into the guard before you're going to run into your finger. So if you're using this knife or using this sharpener on your knife and you're sharpening toward the blade to knock that bevel off from the other side, you're not going to hurt yourself as long as you pay attention to what you're doing. The more practice you have with it, the better you'll get at it. The knife that I carry a lot of times in conjunction with that, you know, once you get into a larger size knife, you need to carry a smaller knife with you sometimes too for delicate, you know, fine tasks and things like that, carving up pieces of meat around the campfire and things of that nature. And the, you know, Frontier First by Blind Horse Knives is a very, very good knife. This was made for me special by Dan Coppins. It's got a beaded leather neck sheath. It's a very 18th century style knife and it has curly maple handles on it to match my Pathfinder Scout. 
and it's just a real good little skinning utility knife works real good for skinning out game and things like that because it's small it's easy to control it's easy to put a razor sharp edge on and I like it real well I'd recommend the Frontier first to anyone who is looking for a smaller knife to use in conjunction or pair with another knife for sure and it's made in typical patch knife fashion I think that's why it was called the Frontier first to begin with I think is why they named it that it was because it was very traditional like a patch knife but this thing's razor sharp and then of course my Pathfinder knife that we all know and love you know probably my all around absolute favorite knife of all time um, again Blind Horse did a great job with this knife you know basically I handed Dan an 18th century roach belly trade knife and I said I want this to be a real knife I want this thing to be you know thick heavy duty one tool option that nobody's ever gonna break nobody's ever gonna complain about it um, Scandy ground and they've done a fantastic job we've sold uh, in excess of a thousand of these knives now and I've never heard anybody complain about them one time so they're a very very good tool option and none of these knives as you notice like we talked about in other videos none of these knives are coated in any way and I think that's important for anyone who's going to use their knife in a survival situation or for a long-term or short-term self-reliance tool is that you don't have that coating on there if you got a high carbon steel knife you want to be able to strike sparks of up with a piece of quartz or flint something like that or rock harder than seven to ignite shark cloth you're going to need it to be high carbon steel and it can't be coated you need that hard, hard sharp 90 degree spine on there for striking your ferro rod you know i don't see any sense in my mind of carrying a hacksaw blade with me or sticking a hacksaw blade somewhere just to have something to strike my ferro rod with when i've got the back of my knife and my knife's attached to my hip all the time you know the only way i'm going to lose this knife is if i die because this knife's strapped to my hip and it ain't coming off whether I fall off a cliff, fall out of a canoe, whatever the case may be, with this Kydex retention system that's set up by Blind Horse Knives and that slide lock system that they've got patented, if you lose this knife, you know, you, you better be dead because there's no way it's going to fall out of the sheath. And if it's attached to your belt, you're not going to lose it. If you've got a ferro rod attached to that thing and shot corded in like mine is, you're never going to lose that ferro rod. You're always going to have that knife and you're always going to have a way to make fire. And with those two things, you should definitely be able to affect your survivability in an emergency situation if you absolutely have to. Nice. Okay, guys. Well, that was just a quick review of, you know, some of the knives that I'm really fond of that I carry quite often. I wanted to go over that with you while I was in the yurt tonight. You can see my breath in here. I need to go over and stoke my fire a little bit. Um, but, you know, even at that, you know, even being able to see my breath, I'm not cold. You know, my feet are a little bit chilly down on the floor. The one foot that I've got down on the floor is a little bit chilly with a wool sock on, but it's not unbearable by any means. And with, you know, a couple layers of clothing on in here and a hat, pff, I'm fine. You know, it's just like a summer day in here to me right now. But I prefer temperatures, you know, between 30 and 40 degrees. That's my favorite time of the year. So it doesn't have to be real hot in this year to make me happy.